Hi, my name is Christine Santori. I'm a registered dietitian and I am certified in obesity and weight management. I'm here today to discuss with you uh, the basics of losing weight, of weight management. Today, we're gonna to discuss the ins and outs of nutrition. So in part one, we go over everything that's not nutrition. We were talking about intuitive eating, mindful eating, and goal setting, stress management, sleep, exercise. Um, today, we're gonna to talk about specifics in terms of what to do when it comes to eating. And I do wanna say, just as a, as a disclosure, these classes are meant for educational purposes only. They are general in nature. Your specific medical history, your specific medications, your specific situation, only your providers know. So they may have advice that is a little different. And I would always want you to, to discuss this with your docs, talk to them before you make any major changes in your dietary pattern. Everything that we talk about today is in no way meant to replace any of that professional advice. Okay, so what works and how we do it? We're gonna to talk today specifically about food choice. Uh, what are my specific recommendations when it comes to weight loss? And we're gonna talk a little bit in terms of how to make that happen, uh, meal planning and meal prepping. So I have nothing to disclose. Okay, so what is the best diet for weight loss? I hear this all the time. I get this question on a daily basis. It is understandable for there to be confusion out there. There is so many uh, different diets, fad diets, so many different people on social media pitching that or this to, to lose weight. And at the end of the day, the answer is any, any manipulation in your diet that puts you in the position to be consuming fewer calories on a daily basis is going to promote weight loss. The problem is that there's no guarantee that this is gonna be permanent weight loss. And in most cases, it's not. Uh, so fad diets tend not to work long-term. Temporary manipulations in your caloric intake will result in only temporary alterations on the scale. So what happens typically with these fad diets is that one for a short period of time uh, consumes fewer calories with the intent of losing weight or increasing their exercise or both. Uh, so they're in negative calorie balance, which means they're consuming fewer calories than their body's burning on a daily basis. This is going to result in weight loss. But your body has ways of countering that. Your body will oftentimes adjust metabolically, start burning fewer calories or sending more of the hormones that tell you that you're hungry to try to fix this. Uh, and that results oftentimes in what we know of as the diet roller coaster. You know, most folks have a long history of lose 10 pounds, gain 15, lose 15, gain 20, uh, and end up decades down the line with a much bigger problem than they did in the first place. So I think dieting is part of the problem, this chronic yo-yo dieting, which is why we encourage everyone to step away from what I would describe as the, the diet mindset or the diet mentality. Weight loss is not easy, uh, nor is it quick. And anybody who tells you otherwise is just not being honest. Uh, weight loss is slow and arduous and takes some intention and change, and it needs to be forever. So I want to make sure that whatever you're doing, you can do forever. So the three components of what I would describe as the best diet for weight loss are, are as follows. All three of these boxes need to be checked. First off, we do need to make sure that you're in negative calorie balance. So we have to find a way <clears throat> to put you in a position where you're consuming fewer calories than your body's burning without you feeling hungry all the time and without you feeling uh, deprived and, and having this be a temporary endeavor. We also wanna make sure that it's promoting your long-term health and well-being. And this is a box that many of those diets on the other slide would not be able to check. So I don't believe that keto is healthy to follow long-term, even though it might provide you with some uh, short-term results in terms of weight loss. And most important, you wanna make sure that it's sustainable. Can I do this forever? Can I do this forever? Should I do this forever? Is it healthy for me? And is it putting me in negative calorie balance? All three boxes need to be checked in order for this to be something that is gonna be a lifestyle for you and support long-term maintenance of weight loss. So what does that mean for us really? What do all of these organizations have in common? So what one recommendation 
do all of these uh, organizations and may suggest and and encourage. I'll give you a second. I'll give you a hint. It's not that we want you to eat less of something. Or <laughs> it is moving more towards a plant-based diet. So what we know from all of the data and all of the research is that moving more towards a plant-based diet will help you lower your risk of heart disease, of hypertension, of hyperlipidemia, of diabetes, and of everything else pretty much that you can think of, cancers. Um, so eating this way not only will help you lose weight and lose weight more easily, but it will also give you all of those other health, health benefits. We do know based on the, the data and the research that an excess intake of animal protein is linked to all types of uh, problems that we don't need nor want. So increased or excess intake of animal protein can leave you vulnerable for kidney disease and diabetes and heart disease, cancers, gout and obesity, everything that eating in a plant-based way protects you from. So protein is important, don't get me wrong, we all wanna make sure that we're meeting our needs for protein, but it's rather easy to meet your needs for protein in plant-based sources. And keep in mind too, that this does not have to be an all or nothing. So if you say, look, I am flat out just not willing to kind of give up all of the animal products that are in my diet, okay, again, this has to be sustainable. So let's work on just having you take a step back. Let's work on maybe increasing the vegetable portion of your plate. So maybe the meat portion or the, the animal protein portion isn't dominant on the plate. There are ways to embrace these improvements in your health, your well-being, and promote weight loss without saying, I have to 100% jump into this. Although obviously, if you are willing, that is the best way to go. Okay. So what kind of benefit uh, and 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 why are we going to do it and what does it mean? So eating whole food plant forward, again, this doesn't have to be 100%, but just eating plant forward, plant leaning, any way that we want to describe it. Uh, basically, we're eating whole foods, real foods, you know, foods that uh, are pretty close to how they would exist in nature, you know, more or less, give or take. Uh, and it is so much easier to achieve that negative calorie balance that we were discussing when we're eating in this way, when we're eating these bulky, fibrous, um, whole foods, then eating the alternative, which is the ultra super processed foods that so many of us have come to rely on in this country. So these ultra processed foods are problematic for a bunch of reasons. Now keep in mind, they may include some whole food ingredients on the, on the label. You may see that they include some grains, some milk or fruit or chicken, but they've been altered in such a way that they really have little resemblance to what those initial ingredients uh, were. And in that processing, generally, everything that's good is stripped away. So during this ultra processing uh, process, all of the fiber, the protein, vitamins and minerals, this gets taken away and is replaced with refined sugars and salt and saturated fats to increase your consumption of these foods. There are scientists that get paid lots of money to come up with the perfect ratio of fat and sugar and salt to keep you coming back for more. Um, these hyper palatable foods can overstimulate your reward pathways, overriding you know, your normal satiety signals. So you're not getting those proper cues that we were talking about in class one you know, to tell you that you've had enough. And oftentimes, because they are so hyper palatable and hitting all of these uh, you know, reward pathways in our brain, it's gonna override your better judgment as well. So definitely the more of these super ultra processed foods that you have, the more you want. And even the ones that claim to be healthy. So be careful of, of the way that manufacturers will try to fool you into thinking that their product is a health promoting product. Keep in mind, there's very little regulation in terms of what people put on the front of the label and how they describe their product. There's really no vegetables in these veggie sticks. So you want to kind of watch. I would avoid you to, to avoid pretty much anything that was in a, a package or a box or a bag, even ones that claim to be diet friendly. I want you to eat actual whole food. If you are 
below the neck physically hungry and require a snack like we were chatting about in part one, much better off to have an apple and a couple nuts than anything claiming to be a diet friendly processed snack. So the optimum approach for both weight loss and health, because uh, what's the point of being thinner if we're not healthier, for both weight loss and health is to eat more whole foods from plants, reduce at least, if not eliminate animal-based foods and reduce or eliminate ultra-processed foods. Okay. So now my number one tip for weight loss, if I'm in front of a crowd, I always ask the question, what do you think, right? So this is not about what I want you to avoid in your diet. This is not something I want you to eat less of, frankly. My number one tip for weight loss is I want you to eat more fiber. Only 3% of Americans reach the minimum suggested intake of fiber a day. So the range for fiber intake, the suggested fiber intake is somewhere between 25 and 38 grams per day. Only 3% of us get there. The vast majority of Americans are fiber deficient. Okay. Where do we get these fibers? We're going to get these fibers from our fruits, from our um, berries, from our nuts and seeds and our vegetables and squash, and sweet potato, and all of the whole grains, oats, quinoa, millet, brown rice, black rice, bulgur, barley, uh, rye, buckwheat, amaranth, spelt, wheat berries, you name it. And the number one food that I think we should all be including, if you get nothing else out of this talk, this is something that I want you to include in your diet, even if you ignore all of my other suggestions, I would like you to eat more legumes. Legumes are the perfect food for a bunch of reasons. Beans are high in protein, zinc and iron, technically a carbohydrate, but a high protein carbohydrate, high in fiber, high in folate and potassium. Legumes promote fullness that is long-term, longer lasting. So you will be fuller tomorrow after breakfast if you have beans tonight for breakfast, uh, for dinner rather. So having beans for dinner tonight will help you increase your levels of satiety and fullness through the next day. Uh, legumes help you reduce your blood sugar and reduce your cholesterol and reduce your blood pressure and reduce inflammation. So it really is the perfect food. If you do nothing else other than this, throw some beans into your salad or your vegetables. Why? It's way more than just keeping you regular. So the benefits of fiber are, are far reaching. Fiber acts as signaling molecules that bond to receptors in the body and trigger a drug-like effect to regulate our metabolism. What drug-like effect do you think it has? It has the same drug-like effect that these GLP-1 agonists have. So increasing your fiber will help you increase your level of satiety. Fiber can also decrease the calories absorbed in a meal by carrying some of these calories out of the body. And really at the end of the day, the only calories that matter are the ones that you absorb. So if you're increasing the fiber in your diet, you're gonna be absorbing less of the calories that you eat. Also, fiber feeds the good bacteria in your gut. So this could be a whole nother class. Maybe I should make it a whole nother class, but we have trillions of bacteria living inside our digestive tract. And these bacteria can be beneficial to us. Um, our gut flora, these bacteria are as metabolically active as our livers. What's in it for us? These bacteria can help increase and boost our immune function, balance hormones, produce vitamins, and improve digestion. And for this, the topic of this conversation can help with weight loss. So the good bacteria in your digestive tract thrive on fiber. Fiber is their food. And as the bacteria is feeding on fiber, it creates short chain fatty acids. These fiber short chain fatty acids have wide ranging effects on everything from your immune function, as we discussed, inflammation, mental health, and play a role in appetite regulation and metabolism. So reasons to move more towards a whole food plant-based eating style. And again, this does not have to be all or nothing. Changes towards reducing our reliance on animal sourced meals and moving a little bit more towards plant-based eating have benefit. It can prevent or reverse chronic disease. 
boost your immune system, reduce inflammation, maintain a healthy weight without trying as hard by increasing your fiber, and also you have a side benefit of lowering your cancer risk. So I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about like just my global suggestions. And again, I've not met you individually. These are not specifically individualized for you, um, but you would do benefit to yourself by switching out what you consider a diet plan for just a healthy way of living. And I know that this sounds cliche, but it's not a diet. It has to be a lifestyle. One of the first things that I go over with folks that I see is structure. We talk a little bit about everything that we chatted uh, about in class one, in part one of this, which was structure of meal. What time do you have your meals? Are you snacking unnecessarily? What time is dinner? How much time do you have between dinner and bedtime? How many hours of sleep do you have? So we really try to focus on structure, maximize sleep, get three meals in during your waking hours, ideally front-loaded rather than back-loaded. Your body prefers to eat earlier in the day than later in the day. So instead of the normal pattern that most people fall into, which is having a little dinky breakfast, if anything, maybe a mid-size lunch, a very large dinner, and then snacking right before bed, I encourage the opposite. You know, more bulky breakfast. Um, moderate lunch, smaller dinner, no snacking after dinner. So just consuming your the same number of calories but shifted earlier is a benefit to you in terms of insulin resistance and a few other things. So uh, first we kind of structure the meals and the sleep. We talk about stress. What are your plans for that? What are you doing for your daily self-care so that stress isn't a motivation or a driver of, of emotional eating? We'll talk about exercise. What can we do to kind of get moving? Think about all of those line items that we chatted about in part one that were important, not just going to the gym. So just overall increasing your calorie expenditure. Uh, we're going to talk specifically about that emotional eating vulnerability that so many people have. Uh, we're going to talk about hydration and the importance of making sure that we're drinking plenty of water. And we'll talk about improving gut microbiome. So by improving the gut bacteria, you are improving your overall health, well-being, and making weight loss way more efficient. So how do we do that? Number one, increase the fiber in your diet by increasing fruits, vegetables, whole grains. So you want to make sure that you are really kind of putting in fiber into your diet and hopefully having it take the place of some of the things that we're going to decrease or avoid, which would be the processed um, meats, the uh, refined sugars, the artificial sweeteners. Okay. Uh, this is a big topic. Artificial sweeteners usually come up. Um, there's not enough research on this to say definitively one way or the other, but I really do feel like there's enough to be cautious and say that there can be some issues with the artificial sweeteners having a negative impact on the gut flora. And that's the last thing that we want when we're trying to lose weight efficiently. So my suggestion would not be to move from uh, liquid calories. You know, I drink sodas and juices and, and sweetened teas don't go to the artificial sugar version of those things. I would really just encourage you to go to water. Okay, so basic nutrition guidelines. Make at least half, if not two thirds of your plate plants. Think about shopping for the plants first. Think about planning your meal around the plants. Not, okay, I'm gonna have salmon tonight or I'm gonna have chicken tonight. What am I gonna throw with it? I want you to think first about the vegetable component, about the grain component. I'm gonna have kale and quinoa and beans. Maybe I'll have a little animal protein if you really wanted it, but like that could just be meal, you know? So think of that first as step one in this process. Um, <clears throat> With intention, reduce fat and added sugars. So even though you may think that your fat source is coming from a healthier place, you want to be careful that you're not adding lots of hundreds of extra calories to your meals with added fats and oils. So be very cautious uh, and frugal when you're using added fats. Avoid the red and processed meats, anything that's fried. Uh, cheese is a very dense, calorically, um, calorically dense food item that can definitely take you off track. It's inflammatory. So I would focus on cheese as an item to take out of your diet. Any kind of refined carbohydrate, these are the carbs that aren't great for you, that don't have the fiber, that have had the fiber stripped away, sugars, sweets, um, and the artificial sweeteners. 
And keep in mind that there are other success strategies that can help you along the way. I think it's really important to have some form of support system in place. You have us, but it's great if you can have someone else to chat with, family or friend that will help you along the way. It's great to have an exercise buddy. Uh, it's great to track your progress in some way that we talked about in, in uh, class one, some way of self-monitoring, setting small, realistic, achievable goals, build in some type of reward system for yourself that's not about the scale. Um, you know, when I lose X number of weight or when I feel better or when I can get into the size clothing, I'm going to do this. Think about burning more calories and physical activity just by sitting less and moving more. Okay. This graphic you may be familiar with. Uh, it's often handed out by all of my colleagues, and it just is a depiction of what that plate could look like being half focused on, on the non-starchy vegetables with the other half broken down into your protein source, with the best protein source being those, those non-animal sourced proteins and your whole grain. What does that look like in real life? This is a patient that, um, that I worked with a little while back. When we met, she was consuming what I would describe as like the typical kind of dieter uh, intake. In the morning, she was doing something like a waffle or a cold cereal. Uh, for lunch, she was doing like half a turkey sandwich with mustard. Uh, she would snack on these 100 calorie packs of, of diet products during the day. Dinner was something that she made for her family that was either, you know, steak or chicken and some type of heavy a uh, starch component like um, <clears throat> a white rice or a pasta and um, and very little veg, if any, uh, with dinner. And she was drinking like Crystal Light all day long. So we switched it up, it took a little time, but this is where she settled in. So for breakfast, <clears throat> she went with an overnight oat and she did rolled oats with berries and chia seeds or flax seeds. She threw a walnuts, a little sprinkle of cinnamon in there. Um, lunch was often... For her, she loved soups, so she would do a lentil soup or some type of bean soup. She'd have a baked sweet potato and a side salad. If hungry in the afternoon, she might have an apple and a small handful of almonds. And then dinner was uh, a large kind of salad, often, where it was some, some type of vegetable uh, or a combination of vegetables mixed with either a bean or a grain. <clears throat> he or she put in both quinoa and black beans. There were days where she brought in uh, fish as a protein, uh, but this was a completely plant-based day for her. And her feedback was that not only was she losing weight, but it was easier than it had ever been in her lifetime, and she had no doubt that she could do this forever. Okay. We're going to talk a little bit about how to get there. So how can you best set yourself up for success in terms of accomplishing um, close to that day that I that I just described for you. So meal planning is really helpful, providing you some way, and this doesn't again have to be all or nothing, but just by planning and prepping ahead of time one of your daily meals um, or getting in in the habit of weekly putting together a couple recipes that you can make bulk and put into containers and keep so that you have things that are convenient and health promoting and ready to go so that you're not vulnerable to the normal type of convenience type foods. So the basics here would be to get yourself some uh, equipment if you don't already have it, large baking sheets, uh, saucepans, pots, a, a good knife is really important, and, and really very important, some glass uh, containers for storing and freezing a variety of these items. So meal planning 101, pick a day, whatever is your kind of light, light day, decide how many meals you're going to make, uh, for how many people really investigate some recipes. We have a bunch that we send out to our patients. So you may already have quite a few recipes that um, that are easy for you to roll into this type of meal prepping or bulk cooking uh, process. There's lots of resources online. I would definitely encourage you to check them out for sure. Um, make a grocery list and stick to it. Make sure that you have a list, go when you're not hungry. <laughs> so go to the store after a meal and kind of stick to the list and then start your prepping. 
So you have there's a couple other there's a couple options here. So maybe you cook batch uh, components of a meal. One of the handouts that I often send to my patients is one that's called one, two, three meals. And it's kind of as simple as that. And it's very similar to that dinner salad that I showed you from from the patient that I was discussing. It's having a big base component of a vegetable, it could be roasted vegetables from the night before dinner, it could be a frozen bag of vegetables, it could be a bag of salad, it could be anything that you're throwing together from what you have in the fridge. That's your base, that's one. Then two, throw in some type of protein source. For her that day, it was a black bean. Maybe it's tofu or tempeh, or maybe it is your salmon. Uh, and then your whole grain. So it could be I'm throwing in some cold quinoa that I made once a week and left in the fridge. So this is very simple. Maybe I just cook quinoa once or twice a week. Maybe I buy some beans and leave them in the fridge so or in the pantry so I could just rinse them off. And then I always have some kind of vegetable and it's really more of assembly at mealtime as opposed to cooking or prepping. Um, or you could have more large batch recipes. The sheet pan meals are really good for this where you kind of have one pan where you put different components on there and just roast it off. And then you section that into uh, portions for you for, for the week. Okay, I kind of just did that. Right, so think about recipe ideas. Google uh, the sheet pan dinners, uh, Instapot recipes, slow cooker recipes, air fryer recipes. All of these are helpful in terms of giving you, you know, one night of work and a whole week of meals. And if you're doing this for a couple weeks, you'll build up a little bit of a supply in your freezer so that you don't feel stuck in a rut and you're not just doing the same types of things. So breakfast ideas, just to give you a few. Um, <clears throat> I think uh, oatmeal is a is a superfood. I'm a big fan of oatmeal. So you could do steel cut oatmeal in a rice cooker and you have it for a couple days or a week. You can add in some nuts, some sprinkles of cinnamon. You can even make it a little bit uh, savory and throw in some lemon and some poppy seeds. Uh, you can also make quinoa or chia seeds as an oatmeal. So you can do uh, you can do quinoa and just add a little unsweetened almond milk and put a couple nuts in there, a little sprinkle of cinnamon, maybe some fruit, uh, and have that as an oatmeal. If you're not a fan of oatmeal, that would be a, a secondary option. Okay. <clears throat> this kind of gives you an idea of that one, two, three meal that I was talking about, where you have more of the vegetable as the base, and then you add in the grain and the protein component. Um, I think that that is uh, something that is quick and easy and works pretty much for everyone. So I would say, you know, find your go-to recipes. You don't need a huge variety here, but I do want at least two to three options for each meal, two different things I can have for lunch, for breakfast, at least three different things that I can have for lunch and dinner so that you don't get bored. Eating healthy does not mean eating bland, eating boring. You know, uh, it's not just about eating steamed vegetables and grilled chicken. I want you to eat tasty, um, inviting, flavorful meals. Okay. And think differently about what I would describe as fast foods, right? So earlier we chatted about the uh, dangers of ultra processed foods. One could argue that some of these foods are technically processed, meaning they're not exactly as they are in nature, but they're pretty good and they're health promoting and it can help you if you're in a pinch in terms of time. So uh, places like Trader Joe's or Whole Foods will have quinoa and farro and other grains that you can buy frozen already cooked. So this is something that all you have to do is then defrost it. Um, canned Beans, I think, are great go-to for sure. You can even find um, more like instant type seal cut oatmeals now in the in the health food stores. Uh, I'm a big fan of the frozen vegetable blends that they call them protein blends, but it really is some type of vegetable mixture with a grain or a bean. So you'll see some type of vegetable medley with lentils or some type of vegetable medley with quinoa or brown rice those are great as a meal in and of themselves or as an add-on. Uh, some canned organic soups are great in terms of lentil soups, chilies, things like that. So don't be afraid to take help bagged salads where you can. 
This doesn't mean that you have to be a gourmet chef or start cooking from scratch every single meal, every single day. But I just want you to think differently about what you're doing um, for each one of your meals and say, okay, does this really support where I want to go long term? Is this predominantly plants on the plate? If not, how can I get it there? And just a few other helpful gadgets that uh, are helpful illustrations of helpful gadgets. If um, you need, maybe you're someone who works on, on you're on the road all of the time, make sure you get an insulated uh, bag with a freezer pack so that you keep your meals cold. The glass containers are really helpful for, for meal prepping. So I think that with a little work along the way and some investigation through the internet, you can get so many different resources on the process of meal prepping. And then you use the suggestions that you get from your providers and some of the tips that we discussed today to kind of focus your search uh, on on meal prepping, meal prepping and recipe hunting. Okay. I hope you guys got something out of today. Uh, thank you for joining me. There'll be some more videos coming up, so I would subscribe and uh, that way you'll get notified anytime we put anything up that uh, would be of support to you. Good luck.